is good if some people like you, but when hundreds of girls have a crush on you simultaneously. Hmm, you better mentally prepare for face than the worst scenario. Hi, I'm Waddle. Today, I'd like to share an interesting story. But before starting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I was 16 and was studying at a high school in the city. I found that the girls sneaky looked at me at school and constantly winked at me like giving a sigh. I have to admit that I was pretty handsome, but couldn't they stop clinging to me like a leech? I no longer felt safe when I was at school anymore. Sneaky looks were everywhere, in the schoolyard, classroom, cafeteria, and even toilet. I was afraid of being stuck, but still excited about that. <laughs> Everyone was proud of being liked by others, and I was certainly not an exception. One day, I found that Alida, who sat at the real table, started to pay attention to me. Alida has burnished brown hair and an adorable face. She was also an excited student, but the problem was Alida already had a boyfriend. Although I couldn't forbid any more from being into me, I must make everything clear before it went too far. After school, I asked Alida to meet me at the corner of the schoolyard. Alida, you have a boyfriend, don't you? Uh, yeah. You meet me just to say that? Of course not. I just, um, Alida, please don't like me, okay? You have a boyfriend, so you shouldn't like me, okay? Hold on. Who told you I like you? How dare you say so? Uh, I know. I know you feel ashamed being exposed like this. I definitely have no feelings for you. Could you please give up? Are you out of your mind? I don't want to continue this nonsense. Move over. Alida shoved me and angrily walked away. I knew she just told untruths, admitting that you like someone more than like a piece of cake. Especially when it was clearly wrong. The next day, as a matter of fact, Alida didn't listen to my advice and the way she stared at me as if she wanted to make love immediately. Jesus. I didn't want to be a third world to destroy others' happiness. If Alida is still being so stubborn, then I must tell her guy. Surprisingly, even though I hadn't said anything to Alida's boyfriend yet, Otis asked me to meet him in advance. Are you Waro? I warned you! Don't you dare bother my girl again! What do you mean? Otis angrily trust me and bumped my back against the wall. Stop fooling around! Alida told me everything. You made me curl glint stare at her all day. What did you mean? You're misunderstanding, dude. Alida has a crush on me, and I knew she had a boyfriend, so I just told her to give up. Otis suddenly punched me in the face with great force. My sore cheek and dizzy head were unbearable. <laughs> I forbid you from having any bad attentions for my girl. If I caught you next time, it would be just a punch. I was puzzled because of Otis' attitude. Otis said that I was harassing and having a bad attention towards Alida. But I truly just wanted to remind them. What have I done wrong with certain such laws? I decided to ignore everything. My god will was not worth being troubled. Alida and Otis, and all the girls falling in love with me, I will ignore all of them. The next day, I normally went to school and realized that it wasn't as simple as I thought. It wasn't a piece of cake to ignore huh? everything. The girls flipped the gleans were too obvious. One girl asked for my number, and another girl asked me out for a day. Leave me alone, please. After school, the homeroom teacher suddenly called me to the office. Sit there, Waldo. Want to say something about the complaint letters from the girls? Complaint letters? They said that you approach and arrest female students. Tell me, is it true? Oh gosh, it's totally a horse. 
So, you mean they are in league to say bad things about you? You liar! Someone witnessed your harassment! Uh, Alright, enemy approaching them, but just to talk, not to harass. Well, clarify it! And I told her what had happened that morning. I taught all the girls and refused their confessions. I don't like if girls express their admiration too directly. You better give up. I don't want to have a girlfriend at the moment. Don't have a crush on me. Don't look at me like that. I won't like you. Most of them ran away in tears. I think they cried a lot and were hurt because of my unexpected refusal. I had no choice, though. I just want to have a normal life. My homeroom teacher seems stunned by my story. Please, don't be mad at me, but I honestly have to say that you should see the therapist. I don't see any problem. Good advice, though. I angrily left the office. Why does she suppose I'm like crazy? I thought she was the one who should come to see the therapist. She acted like I didn't know her scheme. She also liked me. Her eyes showed that. She was trying to make me think ill of other girls. However, her scheme fell. Going to school for me was a burden at the time. I got lost in a shuffle. I couldn't make friends with female men since they all have a crush on me, and male men were jealous because of my popularity. I couldn't focus on study. Letters turned into shady faces of the girls. Homework turned into teasy confessions. I feel like I'm gonna go nuts. It's Lanny, who appeared to break my deadlock and dispel the dark cloud surrounding my life. Lenny was a new student who had fair skin and beautiful blue eyes. Her voice sound came like a bubbling spring. And when I first saw her, I thought that God bathed her with all blessings. I didn't exaggerate. Lenny so shy that she couldn't totally escape any girl sitting next to her. She sat as a cell away from me. I suddenly came up with an idea. If we become a couple, the other girls will stop clinging to me and my life will be back to normal. I found her Facebook account and sent a friend request. She accepted very quickly. Hi. Hi there. We're in the same class, but never talked before. Can we meet for coffee? This Sunday, okay? Sure. I happily rolled on my bed. I knew that. She had a crush on me. On Sunday, I dressed up to go on a date. Lenny was waiting for me, and then we chatted about lots of things. Lenny told me about her former school and the challenges to adapt when moving to a new one. She was grateful because I made friends with her. After chatting in a cafe, we went for a walk in the park, went to the movie theater, and picked up doors in the claw machine. It was such a great day for us. That night, when I was home, Lani and I texted till midnight. She was energetic and cheerful, which was totally <laughs> different from her girly look. I could talk to her all day long. Danny and I officially became besties. We discussed our lessons in class, had meals together in a cafeteria, <laughs> and hung out together every weekend. One day, Lenny invited me to her house. Of course, I accepted it without hesitation. I had already planned to confess my feelings to her on that day. On that day, I was all dressed up and caught a taxi to Lenny's house. When I arrived, I saw Lani and her friends were chit-chatting in front of her house. She saw me, but she pretended that I was just a stranger. She brought them in and totally ignored me. I had no idea how I got home. I was painfully shocked. Yesterday's Lani and today's Lani were totally different. I wondered if someone spoke evil of me to Lani. After school, on the next day, I decided to meet Lenny and ask her the reasons. Lenny, what was going on yesterday? Why didn't you invite me in? Please stay away from me and don't bother me anymore. It was because other girls spare rumors about me, wasn't it? Was it Alida 
or uh, the homeroom teacher? No one badmouth you. Please, let go of me. Lani sped away from me. Her strange attitude confirmed my thoughts. So <sighs> I want to see Alida at a corner of the schoolyard. Don't be so mean, Alida. You can't help me then nobody else can. Is that what you think? What are you talking about? What did you tell Lani? Alida grabs her skirt and didn't know how to respond. Suddenly, Otis angrily showed up. I want you not to bother my girlfriend. You want to be bitten, don't you? Otis looked like a beast. He didn't listen to me at all. He breastled me down, then hit me in the face and stomach. I could only lie there without any resistance until Alida pulled him off. Your teacher would know about that. Wait until you get expelled. Indeed, Otis proved his words. On the next day, I was called to the homeroom teacher's office after school. When I was on my way, I still thought that Alida and the teacher had teamed up against me. Until I opened the door and saw Lani. Lani, please tell Waldo again what you just have said. Waldo has talked me all this time. <laughs> He followed me to the coffee shop, the theater, the park, and anywhere I went. He even came to my house. I don't know what he wants. That makes me really scared. That's not true, Lanny. Why are you lying? I'm telling the truth. Here, you better watch it yourself. She showed me what I text her every day. But there were only my messages. Lanny had never replied even once. We are merely strangers on Facebook. I couldn't believe that all of our happy memories were my hallucinations. <laughs> Am I crazy? No, it is not true. You need to see a therapist. I think you're having some sort of disorder. And you need to receive treatment now. Relax, Waldo. You are just sick. The teacher called my parents and told them everything. My parents were shocked, but they didn't scold me. Instead, they hugged me tightly. My parents took me to the therapist. I had to answer a bunch of questions. Finally, I was diagnosed with erotomania, which means you think people are in love with you, but they're not. A year later, I can finally narrate my story clearly and coherently, but my condition hasn't fully recovered yet. Sometimes, I feel that people are looking at me weirdly, but I've learned to control my mind and emotion. I will let that mistake happen ever again. <laughs>